Again, this is uh, Aquil and Priscilla Ministries. Um, I'm Joe Ellis, and this is my beautiful wife, Ursula Ellis. And um, we are going to give you some information, and hopefully it ministers to you about worship. And um, we pray that God's um, hand be on this video. So... Without further ado, we're just going to um, pray and ask God to lead and guide us and to help us to expand on um, worship and how important it is for us as believers in the body of Christ to um, partake in worship. Father God, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, we pray and we acknowledge you, dear God, as the creator of the heavens and the earth. And we pray, O oh God, this day in the name of Jesus, that you give us understanding and that you give us the words dear lord to relate dear lord to what worship is and how we are to worship you dear god we pray dear lord that you would anoint this word and this message and that it would reach the hearts and the ears and give understanding to the listeners oh god in the mighty name of jesus oh lord we pray that any and everything that would come against this word, dear Lord, that it would be bound in the mighty name of Jesus and it would not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, dear God, and we declare and decree that your word shall go forth as your word says and it will not return unto you void in the mighty name of Jesus. We cover ourselves and we cover everything that is, dear Lord, directed by you in the blood of Jesus. We pray that you protect us and the listeners and that you bless us, dear Lord, through our uh, partaking of this message. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. So we just want to um, get into what worship is and um, how we are to worship. There's um, really a lot of different um, ways that people may choose to worship God but the true meaning and essence of worshiping God is reverence it's to show um, awe or adoration to God it's a form of um, respect um, it's also the way that you um, bow yourself um, in submission and 
you are actually um, proclaiming that God is above your very self mm -hmm. and you're um, expressing that God is greater than you yeah. and that you are at his mercy mm -hmm. and you're at his humble um, service and so worship is something that usually um, precedes service of God or um, precedes uh, works or it you know it just um, it gives God credit for certain things that he may have said or done it's a way to honor and um, show that you know God's word is true and that you attest to the things that God um, has said especially if it's something on the lines of a word or some kind of um, prophetic event or thing happening and for it to unfold in front of your your very eyes in the Old Testament, it was always um, worship that would um, express God's word being true and God knowing all things and having insight on things that he said to do and to expect. So worship would be one of those things that would actually um, give God the glory or credit for certain things. Um, manifesting maybe it's something you may have heard as well it's not always a thing where you have to actually be there but it could be something that um you heard or something that was um confirmed that god may have done well i wanted to first start off um saying that um i thank god for worship um it you know the title of this video is um, that is the design of the kingdom of God. It's like the kingdom of God is composed of worship to God. It's not just worship in a word sense. It's worship to God and for God. And the first thing that I would want to start off with or um, just kick off with is that if the, that's what it's for. It's designed for the kingdom of God. For kingdom citizens it's not for people who are outsiders um, you can't come any other way through um, this kingdom except by the blood of Jesus um, there are a lot of different religions that worship uh, worship is something that many people do but this video was really to clarify and to really give insight revelation and illumination on what worship is for kingdom citizens and we as part of the kingdom of God our worship is going to be different than other religions it's set apart than other religions you know it's a peculiar worship it's not like the worship of other, other religions so we, we talk about worship if you're not if you're an outsider a lot of things are not going to make sense but when once you become a kingdom sit uh, a, a kingdom citizen, then you'll begin to understand the design that God has intended for His kingdom to be. And really, at the end of the story, at the end of time, everybody's going to worship. <laughs> Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. I know that some of you can testify of the victories or the breakthroughs you, you experience through worship um, and that you understand that worship is not just a thing that you say with your lips. I know that I had mentioned that in a video, but it's actually a lifestyle. It actually is a expressive, um, heartfelt relationship you have with the Lord. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get on in this thing and um, unpack this thing so that uh, hopefully you'll be blessed and will be blessed as we um, uncover these things. When you go to the definition of worship, it says that you're attributing um, 
a certain kind of adoration to a deity. It, it, whenever you find a definition of worship, deity is always in there. Um, it's in there because a deity is considered something worthy of worship. It, a deity is someone who is on a higher plane than humans. It's someone who actually has more power than humans. And so when you think about worship, the first one of the things that comes to mind or should come to mind is, is this deity worthy of worship? Is this deity worthy to get this adoration and this honor? And we see time and time again in scripture where it says that the Lord is indeed worthy to get all the honor, not just part of the honor, all the honor, all the praise. And there's something to be said about God getting all and not just part. It's going to be discussed later on in this video. We know that in the Old Testament that um, worship was something that God um, strictly forbidden the children of Israel to um, do to other gods. And it was because God was the one that um, made covenant with the children of Israel. And part of that covenant was for them to only worship and serve him. And that if they were to worship and serve other gods, uh, the agreement was in the, in the old covenant that they would fall under a curse. Mm -hmm. During these times, your success was totally derived of the God that you served. People in those times did not look at their own strength as the means of producing prosperity, health, um, safety. Um, these different things were not produced um, through their own means. They always looked at um, things that were good, that were blessings to come from a deity. They never looked at it as something that they produced on their own. So they they were convinced that if they worship the right God, that they would have blessings and that other nations and people would not be able to um, take what they have and they would not be enslaved and they would not be made... Um, paid other nations, you know, in order to be free and in order to just live. If you looked at how they worship God from Genesis to Revelation, you see that worship was always something that was done with the body, with the soul and with the spirit. Mm -hmm. So when Jesus says, God is a spirit and they that worship me, they must worship me in spirit and in truth. It has nothing to do with music. Music is more so a component of praise. We use music most of the time to uh, help us to praise God. It accompanies us praising God. But we're, we're, we're truly supposedly po uh, praising God with the fruit of our lips. It's supposed to be something that's within the heart. And we praise, which is just a declaration of how good God is and how he's worthy because of the things he has done, like creating the heavens and the earth and creating us and redeeming us and causing us to triumph over our enemies these are things we praise god for bringing us out of certain situations and telling us before we even got out of the situation that how he was going to deliver us so it's it's a way to um give god credit for doing certain things and it it causes us to praise him for doing that it's just like if somebody did a good job for you and you praise them or your child or something for doing something good and you were pleased by it you praise them for it so it us being pleased by the things that God has done 
or the things that God is doing causes us to praise. But worship, it has nothing to do with us praising God in that sense. It has to do with us acknowledging who he is. It'll be praise of the things they once done or accomplished, but it won't be something that's, you know, present. I'll be talking about things that happened maybe in the past, but worship transcends what just happened in the past and in the present. It goes into the future yeah. uh, worship. It doesn't just keep me bottled or locked up into what God once did for me or what God may be doing for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It, it's me saying or expressing what and who God is in the in the future. You know, and it and how how we would say in eternity that's to come. As we mentioned, worship is spiritual, it's not anything of the flesh, it's not a mind over matter kind of thing. It is something that um, encompasses God. And as I mentioned earlier, when you think, look at Revelation, when you look at different books in the Bible, like Ezekiel and different things, you're seeing that the Lord is surrounded by worship, whether it's the um, the elders who are worshiping him or the beast. He's going to be surrounded by worship. So it lets you know what kind of God we're serving. It's like he is used to having worship around him. He's not used to having this thing where he never worshiped. <laughs> it's not it's not something a part of his makeup. He is a God who not he demands worship and also is a part of how he functions. So if you get that revelation, it can make sense when it comes to what worship can produce because worship does have a function as well. It's something that we ourselves are supposed to do, but it also has a function. So I mentioned when it comes to God's throne that he's surrounded by worship. And so if he if his function is connected with worship, when he uh, when he's surrounded by it, he begins to do things. It's like worship begins to make call he moves at all times. He's always doing something and thinking about something, whatever he's doing. But you have to understand that worship can cause him to move. It's something that is, because he's so used to it. When you when worship begins to um, surround him or when we begin to worship him, he begins to do certain things. And I know that in a short, I had mentioned about um, when you're worshiping him. And focusing on him, he began to do things in our life. Mm -hmm. And um, worship is like his mechanism of how he moves, how he constructs things. You know, there are some people who are um, artistic. And I can speak about this because I know that the Lord has gifted me with the gift of art. That they actually get inspired when they hear music. Um when they it could be around nature, things that inspire them to be creative. And you got to think about when it comes to worship of God. When God is, it, worship inspires him. <laughs> it causes him to be creative. And not that he's not creative in his own right, but creative in the way he handles things in your life and in the world. It, it creates this creativity in him it produces this creativity within him um when you think about moses and how he instructed moses on the tabernacle the tabernacle is actually those instruments are actually symbolic of the form of worship that god requires um the tabernacle when you go to a tabernacle or a temple these are places of worship that people go to and so when you think about um, the tabernacle of Moses, these are types and shadows that have to reflect or actually reflect the design of worship, which is a design of the kingdom of God. And so you're seeing so many things that incorporate worship. It's, we see it in the Old Testament. We see it in the design of the tabernacle of the temple. It's all designed in the spiritual 
as a means of God's habitation. You know, when it says that God inhabits the praises of his people, God inhabits worship. As I mentioned, that worship that it surrounds the throne of God. There isn't a time in, in, in history or in the future that you're not going to see worship at some point or way or shape being surrounded by God. And so if it's surrounded by him, you know, he's in the center of worship. We um, put ourselves on a lower status than God. We don't make ourselves equal to God. We're, we're actually proclaiming that God is greater than us. And if you ever seen any old like um, movies that had, you know, kings and queens, the servants, they would all kneel, bow down, bow their heads. Um, they would kiss their hand or their ring, you know, different, um, uh, you know, mannerisms and different things, you know, they would show um, loyalty, allegiance, and they would show that that person that was in authority that they were greater um, and that they were put in place by God. And so when it comes to us serving and worshiping God, you know, how much more should we bow down to God and show reverence to God? Because, you know, reverence was accepted from man to man, you know, showing that this man was greater you know, or this kingdom was greater. You would have to bow down to the greater one. And, and that was to show that they had dominance over you. And so worship encompasses all of that. You know, God is supposed to be the dominating one in our lives and everything is supposed to revolve around our service and our devotion to God. And all of those things, they all stem from worship. God said he wants all of our hearts. He wants all of our worship. And he wants, you know, all of our devotion. And when we do that, um, God blesses us. And when we do that, you know, God will enable us to be victorious in the things that we go after that um, we may need to overcome and conquer and God will, you know, allow certain things in our lives to manifest based on our commitment to worship or our commitment to being loyal to God and us being subservient, you know, to God and not being equal to God. Worship is a function and it is a feast of the Lord. Um, worship is something that actually gives his people um, joy, satisfaction if you feel discontented. It gives you patience in this life. It gives you the drive that you need to endure this race for God. So that God can begin to be lifted up, first of all, and that God can begin to move. He began to do things. He can begin to move in his realm, in his spectrum that he's so comfortable with moving in. Focus. You know, whatever you're focused on, that is stem with worship. And actually, what you're focused on directs your direction in life, your decision making. If you're if your direction or your focus is on certain things or certain people or a certain person, it's going to direct your life. So that's why the Lord made sure or he wanted to make sure that worship was where the focus was solely on him because he knows that worship directs your life. Whatever you worship, whatever you focus on, whatever you adore, if your worship is not directed properly or directed in the right direction, it's going to cause a lot of problems in your life. You're going to make bad decisions based on what you're worshiping, what you're focusing on. I did want to give an example of um, something that happened years ago to kind of go into this. And um, there was a prophet 
that actually I was a I was actually um, attending his ministry many years ago, and actually he had spoken over my life. He pretty much had um, through the Lord had spoken about where my life was going to go um, in the prophetic and how it was going to be patterned similar to how his ministry was and how his prophetic gift was. And I remember it was one time in a service that God just, he just spoke through him. He just stopped the, the, the what he, whatever he was speaking abruptly. And he began to say, thus saith the Lord. He said that you are not giving me your best. He said that you are worshiping or you're focusing on your trials. Your trials is what's causing you not to give me your best. And when God says that you're not giving me your best, it means worshiping him. Focusing on him. That's what worship is. You're focusing on a deity or whatever you're 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 looking at. You're worshiping it. You're adoring it. And he was saying that your trials are, are what's causing you to not focus on me. It's, it's like, are the trials bigger than me? Doesn't the word of God say that there's nothing too hard for me? You know, what is bigger than me? What can challenge me to where I'm going to back down and say, well, I can't handle this because it's just way too great. God, it's, it's, it's like he was challenging um, us as a congregation. Um, it's something where um, God was saying that your focus is not where it should be. And God is very jealous for worship. As I mentioned earlier, he's surrounded by worship. If he does not get all the worship, all the glory, he's going to make sure he does get it. He's going to really wonder why. Well, he doesn't know why, but he's going to get to the bottom of why that's the way it is and why he's getting half worship, which brings us to the times we're living in today. Um, there's a lot of things that's going on in the world that causes or is causing the people of God to focus more on that than on the Lord. And this is why the Lord had us to get into worship and to really um, pronounce it and to magnify it because he's saying, I want the focus more on me and on my abilities. There are not everybody in the body of Christ is doing this, but there are many in the body of Christ that their focus is on other things. It's on the things that's going on in the world. It's on the problems in their own life. It's on this person, on what that person is doing. It's on so many other things other than himself. And, you know, if you know anything about the Bible, also it says that he's a jealous God. Um, when he's seeing that your attention is on other things, he's like, wait a minute. Why are you not focusing on me anymore? Because worship has to do with relationship. Why are you not paying attention to me like you used to? Um, this, whatever your, whatever, whatever surrounding you is actually causing you to focus more on that than on me. And I want to direct your attention. I want to direct my people's attention to focus on me because it's going to cause your, um, your directives or your decision making to be based on whatever you're worshiping, whatever you're focusing on, which is me. I can lead you. I can guide you in these seasons that you're in, in the seasons of this world. I can lead you and give you the right um, decision making to do and how to prepare, how to do this, how to do that. When you're focusing on me, and I think of the scripture in the Psalms where it says that because he set his love upon me. I will deliver him. I will do this. And I will have the scripture on the screen. I'll do all these things because he set his love, his attention, his affection, his adoration on me. I will do these things in his life. Um, we have to understand that when our focus is on other things, they can it, it cannot help us. Our trials cannot help us. Um, the things that we're worrying about cannot help us. Nothing in this world can help us but God. So he's saying that you need to focus on the one who can change the situation or can give you 
the right decision making and the right steps to make in your life when you're focusing on me through worship. like seven times and then they had the shout and the the priest had to blow those trumpets <laughs> you know um so that the walls would fall down um and so you know it, it's it's just like that you know in our lives and things there are certain things that may be um in our lives that God wants us to overcome and it's not an option for them to remain and when you tend to go after them they wall themselves in so that you can't just outright you know defeat them and you know that's how certain things are and you know it's just certain situations and people lives that are like that like you know they they try to go after certain things but they find that once they try to go after them, and that's in the spirit, they find out that these things have these barriers that prevent them from actually defeating what it is that um, God has said, you know, to these things have to be overcome in your life in order for you to have the things that I have for you. And I have empowered you to do them. But, you know, God gives us certain, you know, instructions on how to deal with certain problems in our lives. And, um, you know, worship is one of them. So, you know, even though if you read the account of it in Joshua, you see that the, the warriors or the army of God preceded the priests that had the Ark of the Covenant. And it was seven priests that um, had the trumpets and they um, took the, the Ark of the Covenant of, you know, around the walls of Jericho. And they had to do that seven times. And it's because once that was accomplished, the warfare that they had to, um, you know, had to engage in after the walls had come down, they would be successful. It, it would be nothing to protect the enemy at that time 